All right, hello again, out of the two people. So uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about simplifying and multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, so we're going to start talking about operations in general. Uh, I always do multiplying and dividing first because it is the easier of the operations. Uh, in the next video, here in a couple of days, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting, which is uh, still not difficult by any stretch, but it does involve a couple more things. <clears throat> so let's talk about simplifying first. So the main thing about all of this is um, it's really important, as it has been for a while already, to be adept and comfortable with factoring and be able to factor quadratics, either normal to factoring or with the greatest common factor, uh, quickly and efficiently, because that's really what this boils down to. Okay. So on this first one here, and that's to start with factoring, like right off the bat, if you see simplifying or any kind of operations, factor it first and then just see what happens after that. So if we see x squared minus 4x minus 12, how would I factor that? Well, we know we have to multiply to get negative 12. Same numbers be add to be negative 4. So that would be negative 6 and positive 2. And then if we factor the bottom, remember this is a special case. This is our difference of squares. So this would be x minus 2, x plus 2. Now once that's factored out, I think you see that we have things in common. So I've got an x plus 2 on the top and the bottom. So those can cancel out. So my simplified version of this initial problem is this x minus 6 over x minus 2. So what this really boils down to, even when we get into the multiplying and dividing here in a few minutes, what this really boils down to is factoring and then canceling out like terms. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and pause the video real fast and do this one on your own, then I'll, I'll run through the solution to that here in about five seconds. Okay, so if we factor the top, this would be x minus 3 and x plus 1. And if we factor the bottom, it would be x minus 3 and x plus 2. And again, we see that the x minus 3 terms cancel out. So my final answer can be written as x plus 1 over x plus 2. Now, obviously, these first two examples, we, we, we aren't doing any operations. We're just simplifying those guys. Uh, but when you're multiplying expressions, nothing changes. Now we just have two sets of fractions. We're still going to factor, and we, but we can still cancel things out from either, from either of the terms. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this first one here. Notice on top here, all I can do here is just a greatest common factor. Notice they both have a 3 and they have a single x in common. So if I take that out, then I would have x minus 1 left over. And if I factor the bottom, x squared plus 4x minus 5, that would be plus 5 and minus 1. Same thing on the second fraction. How do you multiply to negative 20, add to be positive 1? It's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 4. And on the bottom, you can't do anything. It's just a 3x, so that's going to be just leave it the way it is. Now, when we cancel things out here, even like notice, like obviously the x minus 1s cancel out there in the same fraction. But we can even go across fractions. Like if you see something on the top and the bottom, as long as you're multiplying, those will still cancel out. So I can take away the x plus 5s. And heck, I can even take away the 3x because those are in common also. So in this case, I'm just left with x minus 4 over 1. If you want to write it as, as x minus 4 over 1, you can. Uh, but you would always just see that written as just plain old x minus 4. Because anything over 1 is just itself anyway. How about the second example? Again, GCF. x times x minus 3. Nothing to do on the bottom. Second one, factor the top. And nothing to do on the bottom of that one either. 
So what cancels out? Well, I got the x minus 2's that cancel out, and I have that x in front that cancels out. So again, just like the first one, everything in the bottom goes away, so all I'm left with is just the x minus 3 and x plus 3. And that's fine, but I think on, on most, especially if it's like a SAT or like a multiple choice test, I think most, if it's multiple choice, they'd probably multiply that out to get x squared minus 9. But either one of those, if you're just writing it out, uh, you know, on a piece of paper, like a short answer type thing, either of those answers would be okay. So again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video real fast and, uh, and work out those two. And we'll go through those solutions and then move on to dividing. Okay, so let's check our answers here. So again, if we factor everything here that we can, so we, we're taking a GCF out of the top of 2x, and we have x minus 5 left over, and bottom is a difference of squares. And on the top, can't do anything with either one of those, so they just say what they are. And then we see what cancels out. The x minus 5s obviously cancel out. The twos cancel out, and notice one of the x's also cancel out. So that x goes away, and basically one of the x's, I'm going to take away the squared. Okay, so my final answer here would be x plus 3 on top, the only thing left over, over x times x plus 5. And again, that's totally fine as your final answer. You might see that bottom uh, multiplied out, so you might see it written as x squared plus 5x. But again, just like the last example, either one of those would be okay. And then for the last one, again, lots of factoring going on here. So the top one multiplies the 10, adds a 7, would be 5 and 2. Bottom, just a GCF of 2. And then the second fraction would be x minus 4, x plus 1. And then the bottom, just a GCF of 5. I'm sorry, just a GCF of x, I should say. So x times x plus 5. And then cancel out everything completely like terms, right? So the x plus 5s go away. The x minus 4s go away. And I think that's all that cancels out. So what are we left with? x plus 2, x plus 1 over 2x. And again, you can also multiply that, that whole thing on top left over. You can also write that as x squared plus 3x plus 2 over 2x. So either one of those correct answers would be valid. So let's go on to division, right? Because division it turns out it's nothing more than multiplication. So before we get into our, our expression, let's go back to like fifth grade or something like that and talk about what if we just dividing two fraction numbers. So if we had two thirds over four fifths, your teacher back then might have used a, a phrase that said keep change flip. And what that means is we keep the top fraction, we, are, we keep the first fraction, so keep that as two thirds. We change the division to multiplying, and then we flip the bottom, or a mathy way to say that would be take, take the denominator. And then we can simplify from there, or just multiply and simplify at the end, either way. But notice, I can't do anything with the three and the five, but I can divide the two and the four. So. If I simplify that to 1 and 2, then my final answer here just becomes uh, 5 over 6. So we're going to do the same kind of deal when we're dividing um, when we're dividing rational e expressions. Okay? So it's still going to be a cube chain flip. So we're going to keep the first, change it to multiplying, 
and then flip the bottom or, or, or flip the second one, I should say. Uh, but it's but we still have to factor first. So whether you do it in one step or you can do it in two steps, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to do this first one in one in two steps, and then I'll do the other two just in one step. Okay. So if I'm going to factor first, so if I factor, obviously I can't do anything but seven x. Here I can take a two out, leave it as division for right now, and then on the second one I can take an x out of the top. And on the bottom, we can factor that. And then apply the keep change flip thing. So 7x over, keep the first one, change it to multiplying, and then flip the second one. And then just start canceling things out that are like terms. So I have an x minus 6 on both of them. I have an x minus 5 on those two. And I can even take out the x and the x. So all I'm left with in this case is just 7 over 2. Now, that will usually not happen. You'll usually have some x's in there or, you know, whatever. But in this case, everything canceled out. I'm just left with 7 over 2, which is kind of fun. So again, factor, keep change flip, cancel things out, and we'll go from there. So again, last time, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. Go and work on these last two questions here. On that last one, I could write that second one as that over one. So don't forget, we can always write it as a fraction, even if it's not written as a fraction. So again, pause the video, factor everything out, keep change flip, cancel things, and then we'll go through those answers. Okay, so on the second one here, I'm going to do this in all in one step. So I know I'm going to keep the first one alone. So all I'm going to do is factor the first fraction. So that's going to be plus 4 and plus 5 over plus 3 and minus 2. And then I'm going to change it to multiply, and I'm going to flip it. So if I factor the bottom, I know that's going to be on top. So that will be plus 6 and minus 2. And then factor the top, it's going to be the bottom. So multiplies to 24, adds to 10, would be 6 and 4. And then cancel things out. So I got a plus 6 in common. I got a plus 4 in common, and I have a minus 2 in common. So what's left over? All I have is just an x plus 5 on top and x plus 3 on the bottom. And then same thing for the last one. Again, GCF on top, factor first, keep change flip, and go from there. So I can take a 2x out of the top and be left with x plus 5. On the bottom, I can take an x out, x minus 7, times, and again, I'm going to go and flip this, so I'm going to put the 1 on top and then just factor the bottom, that would be plus 5 and minus 2. And when you cancel, we have the x plus 5s that go away. We have the x's that go away. So what am I left with? Just a 2 on top, 2 times 1. And then we have the x minus 7 and x minus 2. And again, just like we did on that first page, that's totally fine for um, a handwritten answer. But, you, but on multiple choice, you might see that multiplied out. So you can also write this as 2 times x squared minus 9x plus 14. Okay, so that is multiplying and dividing rational expressions. As always, if you need any help or have any questions, feel free to send a message, come into tutoring. Next video, we'll be, we'll be covering adding, subtracting rational expressions. And until next time, stay safe.